Hello, as you may have ascertained from my provocative title and thumbnail, I have decided to sell out. In addition to going profanity-free and speaking with clear diction so that I may be accepted and understood by the widest demographic possible, I will be making clickbait containing my spicy hot takes which will generate juicy drama and gossip, and more importantly, bring me a lot of YouTube money. Today's hot button topic, which is on everyone's minds, Salamence. The best choice bander in advance? In my opinion, yes. Now, I realize it's a very controversial and risky thing to say, and it requires a lot of bravery to say it. So, if my bravery has inspired you, then you may support me at my Patreon, link in the description. After all, this mansion does not pay for itself. Now, that aside, the idea of best choice bander in advance doesn't really get thrown around a lot, but I think if you asked most players, the consensus would probably be Metagross. And it's easy to see why. It's easy to fit on a lot of teams with just about no support. Its steel typing gives it a ton of incredible resists that let it get on the fields a lot, most notably resists to normal rock and flying. And its steel typing means it's immune to sand, which is always useful. Doesn't reveal that it's not holding leftovers when it comes into an attack or spikes. It's incredibly strong, and it's so good with just these three moves that it could very feasibly not run a fourth and still be pretty much as good as it already is. Now, I do have a video entirely dedicated to the fourth move on Choice Band Metagross, which you can check out. Shameless plug, but that just speaks to how good Choice Band Metagross is. And one of those three moves that it could use only is Explosion, which Oko's Skarmory, which is incredible for a million reasons, opens up a lot of opportunities for its teammates. And if Skarmory is getting KO'd, then no other resist is safe. Long as you don't blow up into Gengar, you are taking something out. Now, I'm not saying that I'm right and everyone else is wrong, and honestly, my viewing of Band Mence as the best bander is probably more a preference thing than an objective metagame truth or anything close to that, but I've been a Band Salamence fan for close to a decade, and recently, after a streak of using it and really coming to appreciate how much it does for me, I realized just how highly I really value it. So I figured I would share that and maybe open up a new world where we appreciate Band Salamence for the incredible Pokemon that it is. Now, these other three Pokemon are the direct competition for best choice band user in advance. Heracross and Flygon are great, but I don't think anyone would dispute that they don't have the same presence as these guys. So, uh, Metagross, we already know why it's great. Tyranitar is the best Pokemon in the tier, and so you're not really going out of your way to slap it on your team. Uh, just by having it, it's already summoning sand, which is of course amazing. And it's incredibly hard to switch into it with your standard Swampert kind of team because Focus Punch crushes pretty much everything. It, you know, water types beware. And things like Claydol aren't safe from HP Bug. And it's just incredibly easy to get it in and threaten everything. I mean, it's, it shatters Skarmory. It's just incredibly hard to wall. And Arrow, of course, is tied for the fastest Pokemon in the tier. So it is going to be cleaning up everything late game. And it, just like Tyranitar, it has that amazing rock stab. So why Salamence? Well, first of all, I, I, well, first of all, I want to just mention that this is the set you should be using in terms of moves. EVs can be whatever, as long as it's adamant. I am adamantly opposed to Jolly because I feel that Ban Mence's greatest attribute is its power, and if your team is really so weak to base 100s that you have to try and speed tie them with Ban Mence, you should probably restructure your team, or just use Arrow, but if you really need Salamence's Fighting Resist, more on that later, then 
you know, team has to change some way. I'm very much uh, an adamant Salamence guy. I'd never use Jolly. And uh, the reason that mixed Salamence can afford to go plus speed is that it's still hitting its targets similarly hard to what a plus special attack Salamence would do. I mean, it's Dragon Claw, Fire Blast, HP Grass combo is still shattering its targets for the most part. But I think with Bandments, which really tends to need every percent it can grab, then I, I just can't ever see giving that up. So use Adamant Bandments, you know, make the speed whatever you want. Go max speed if you want, but I like some bulk on it because I like Salamence to switch into things. Another thing we'll get to later. And uh, this is the speed for Adamant Heracross because Jolly is bad. Seriously, it's terrible. That could be its own video. Why Jolly Heracross is horrible and why you are an idiot if you use it. <laughs> no offense or anything. So, yeah, so th uh, these guys are great. We know why they're great. So what is it about Salamence? Well, first off, I'm going to go over the flaws of these others, which will then reveal some of Salamence's virtues, as it does not have these flaws, at least to the same extent. So, with Metagross and Tyranitar, they are very vulnerable to being trapped. Metagross is vulnerable to both Magneton and Dugtrio, and Tyranitar is vulnerable to Dugtrio. They are also both hit by spikes. That's not so bad for Metagross, because it tends to explode a lot early, but for Tyranitar, that can be very bad. And whereas Tyranitar is more vulnerable to spikes, Metagross has the double... Uh, excuse me. Has the double trapper weakness, which is exacerbated by the fact that one of the trappers, Magneton, can straight up switch into it most of the time. I forgot to get the music going, so let's do that. So, when Metagross wants to spam Meteor Mash, you know, Magneton can just come in and see it's banded and you get a free Metagross KO. And that's why Brick Break is a great move on it in the last slot. Again, whole video dedicated to that. So, these guys get trapped really easily. And uh, Aerodactyl and Salamence are similar in this regard because they are both immune to spikes. Now, they're not immune to getting trapped because sometimes band or not banded, sorry, Pursuit Tyranitar will pursue them, but that's a lot more palatable than straight up being KO'd by Metagross and Tyranitar, especially for Salamence because it is so often paired with Wish Blissey, at least if you're me, which is a great partner to it for a million reasons. We'll go over that later. Now, something that is not in Salamence's favor. None of these three need Magneton. And I recognize that's not great, but the upsides, I think, are worth it. In net battle days, then, the Brick Break slot used to be Fire Blast, but nowadays, and for, like, a, six years minimum, then I think Elements has absolutely needed Magneton because Skarmory runs too much special defense for Fire Blast to be worth it, and Brick Break does a lot more. It Oko's even max HP T-Tar, unlike Earthquake, which never KOs max HP T-Tar from full, and it does an absolute ton to Bliss, and against Snorlax, it's huge as well. So, uh, definitely run Magneton with it, and Brick Break. And, of course, Adamant. So I recognize that's not a point in Salamence's favor, but the ability to hover above spikes and not be trapped by Magneton and Dugtrio is huge, because those are more prominent on average than Pursuit Tar, especially because they can be combined. And, even if you disagree that they're m less prominent than Pursuit Tar, then the difference is that Salamence can very much recover from a Pursuit. Not to mention that Tyranitar is not switching into Salamence freely. Whereas Metagross can be switched into freely. Hell, even Dugtrio, I mean, this is this is ballsy, but Dugtrio lives a banded rock slide, so you can do that. Now, while Salmons doesn't get chipped by spikes, it does get hit by sand, and that is true, for sure. But I think it's a lot more palatable, especially because that spikes immunity comes with the Dugtrio immunity. And you might be thinking, well, why not Arrow? Arrow's immune to spikes and sand. 
And it's similarly not easily pursued by Tranatar. By the way, I left this hidden power blank because it can be bug or flying. So, uh, well, the answer is, yeah, so Arrow is faster, it's immune to sand and spikes. They're similar, right? Sure, but Arrow's more of a cleaner, and not that it can't break open the opposing team for itself, but I tend to prefer Salamence for that because it gets on the field easily. Arrow is frail and does not have a lot of easily used resists. Its fire resistance is nice, but it's still frail, so you can't throw it into Charizard a million times. I'm not saying Salamence is suddenly a wall, but I think on average it definitely switches in more easily because it can switch into stronger attacks like uh, Celebi Psychic or Heracross Megahorn or even Rock Slide. Again, Blissey Wish, another partner I can't recommend enough. They It goes so well to, with Ments. You keep it healthy just to attack the opponent the entire game. And Salamence is a lot stronger than Arrow. Look at this attack stat. This is almost 100 points more. And it hits... I mean, here's how strong it is. It 3-hit KO Swampert. Uh, I mean, let's get to the calc. There's... So this should be Salamence. And this should be Swampert. Look at that. That is guaranteed with lefties. If you pair it with Spikes, it's even better, of course. Whereas Arrow is doing a very low chance to 3-hit KO. So it, the power is immense, and the ability to switch in is immense. In the recent months of advance, we've seen an uptick in fighting types. And Salamence not only switches into them, but immediately poses an offensive threat. Now, Arrow is amazing at cleaning up these frailer offensive teams with offensive Swamperts and offensive Metagrosses and Zapdos and Snorlax and your filler Charizard or Breloom or whatever, but it struggles to switch in. Salamence puts a ton of pressure on these Pokemon, and it switches into them a lot more easily. Not only does it switch into them because of its resists better, and Intimidate, of course, which is one of the best abilities in the game, but it switches in better because it can switch into Pokemon that are healthier and threaten a KO. For example, let's say you're predicting a Metagross Earthquake. If you switch Arrow into a Metagross Earthquake, it has to be a lot weaker because Arrow does so much less to Metagross. So, C versus 0 HP. That's 75 to 88. It's still pretty good damage, assuming 0 HP Metagross. But, you know, that's still risky. Whereas Salamence versus 0 HP Metagross, look at that. And 87.5 to KO. And, you know, even against bulky sets, and that's a much, much bigger threshold. So, as opposed to Arrow, who's doing 62 to 73. Salamence's minimum is so much stronger than Arrow's maximum, and that's another way that Salamence gets on the field more easily. It has more opportunities because of its defensive capabilities, which are superior, and its superior power. Now, nothing cleans up a team like Arrow, of course, but I'm saying they're different, as opposed to the idea that because their defensive traits are similar in terms of the uh, flying typing, then Arrow would outclass Mens, but it doesn't. So, and honestly, that's just a, that's pretty much what Mens does. It gets in pretty, I mean, like, even something like an offensive Swamper, because you switch into anything that's not Ice Beam. So let's take uh, this defense. See, that? look at that Arrow Calc with Double Edge. 35.5 to 2 a KO, that's already pretty impressive. And you look at Mens, who's Stab, clean 2 a KO's offensive Swamper. And the great thing is, you can use Earthquake with Salamence because it hits Swampert almost as hard. See, look at this immense chance to a KO, pretty much guaranteed. And you also absolutely crush Metagross. And if you want to just stick with HP Flying, that's fine because you don't want Zapdos to come in for free. And look at this HP Flying against Zapdos. Well, these offensive teams is getting cleanly 3 a KO'd. So basically, you put a ton of pressure on them and you really force the KOs. A lot more than Arrow does. Not, not that Arrow doesn't similarly th threaten these teams, but it's not getting in as easily 
which translates to Salamence having more of an impact. And while Salamence's speed is not arrow, in terms of competing with Metagross and Tyranitar, it's blazing fast. This is a huge speed tier. This is outrunning all those Suicunes and Heracrosses that are already fast because they get the jump on the Metagross, T-Tar, Swampert kinds of guys. So, it's very it, against these kinds of popular offensive teams, Salamence is very fast. I mean, it's not blazing fast, but against the mid-range guys that populate and dominate so much of the advanced metagame, you are blazing by them. You can creep a little if you want. Sometimes I like to invest more in Spadef just because it makes Mence better at switching into uh, Celebi Psychic, which is a big one. So you can do that as well. Uh, but yeah, so those are the traits that make Salamence so good. And if you want examples, then I have a video of my games from SPL 11. And I used Band Mentz in three of those, I believe. And every single game, Band Mentz was incredibly useful. And in the first one, then it was a perfect example of what I'm talking about here. And that it forced the KO on the opponent every time. Because he was using a very fast-paced, very powerful offensive team. But those teams are also frail. And Salamence really preys on their frailty. Because their defensive uh, constituents, the de facto Swampert and Metagross with the Zapdos backing them up against the Earthquakes, they're deathly afraid of Salamence. And it has the speed and the ability to switch in to really uh, threaten them. I mean, even against something like Tyranitar, you pivot into an HP Grass, uh-oh, Titar's got to run away, Swampert's coming in, or Metagross is coming in, they're taking a really big hit, and... Sometimes you even see things like a UD demonstrated this past SPL. Zapdos is such a popular initial switch to Salamence on offensive teams because they don't want to let their Swampert or Metagross immediately get smacked really hard and then suddenly become vulnerable to Tyranitar. So since HP flying and EQ is such a more such an automatic move almost for the Salamence user, they can stave it off with Zapdos and threaten it out. When Zapdos' is health, they can be a little more cavalier with. And some smart players even take advantage of that. So when they're facing that situation where Salamence is clearly scaring something out, they can go for the Rock Slide just because they know smart players like to pivot around uh, Band Mentz initially at first with Zapdos. So it really does threaten those offensive teams incredibly, incredibly hard. Gets so much opportunity, so many opportunities to switch into them. And every time it switches in, it's destroying them. There is a term that Asta Matitos and Vapicuno use called racing, and it really sums the idea up well. That I think most good players are familiar with it, but basically the idea is it's uh, th there are those games which are pretty much slugfests and trades, and you're b basically just trading sacrifices against your offensive threats. And you really have to force KOs in order to keep up with your opponent because you're just barely keeping up with theirs. And Ban Salamence is incredible at doing this, again, against those offensive teams, because it, every time it comes in, it is threatening that KO. So if you're dancing around that mixed Tyranitar that's really giving your team a hard time, maybe you can cut your losses because you know you're going to be able to even the score at least by having Mence come in afterwards. I mean, it is prediction-reliant. But so is every single choice bander. And it's so strong that even just... Uh, even a misprediction can work in your favor, as you can see with the HP flying on Zapdos example. So, and as for defensive teams, I haven't even covered those, because I just wanted to go over how Dangerous Helmets was against offense. And against defensive teams, oh my goodness, you know, guys like... Celebi are all over the place, and especially with spikes down, nothing is safe. I mean, the safest thing is Milotic, which has to recover every single time and has to be at absolute full health. Otherwise, it is boned. You get a ton of opportunity, and Blissey will keep it healthy, and you can double switch it in on their Blissey, and you chase them out, and everything is threatened. There's no real safe switch. And, yeah, it's just very strong Pokemon against both offense and defense. I think the support mandated for it, Magneton at least, you don't need Wish Blissey. I personally love it, but it helps a lot. And I think it's really worth it, because 
I'm not saying anything against these guys, by the way. I'm a huge fan of all three of these choice banners, and I use them a ton, especially Arrow. And for a while, I especially Titar and Arrow together. But I think uh, I just love Salamence's blend of defensive utility and how difficult it is to really punish your opponent for having it and how it really forces those KOs against both offensive and defensive teams with this blend of power and speed and bulk and typing and everything. So, yeah, uh, if you want to see it in action, I have the SPL 11 review video has three games in which Ban Mets is incredible, and there are more replays from this past season of SPL, such as UD, Rock Sliding, uh, Zapdos, immediately. And... What else is there? I think that's pretty much it. Ban Salamence is amazing. Go forth. Uh, enjoy spamming it. And I think, yeah, I mean, the most popular Salamence set is definitely Mix, because it's very easy to use. But I think while Sal Ban Salamence is more predict heavy and not as apparent in its immediacy, because, you know, it's not 2 KOing everything as so much as it is 3 KOing everything. But then later in the game, it's it, it snowballs really, really hard. It's harder to check with things like Zapdos. So, uh, Band Meds definitely deserves a lot of love. And I don't want to be the only one speaking up for it, because it is definitely worthwhile. On It definitely deserves a lot more usage than it currently has. For a while, people were kind of down on Salamence as a whole, but I, I, I don't think that was fair. And yeah, so ban Salamence, amazing Pokemon. So I think I'll wrap it up there before I fluff this up too much more. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this was informative. I hope you enjoyed. And I will catch you next time.